Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing. Here it is, mid-February, in beautiful Mexico Beach. Got a wonderful sunrise coming up. But we're gonna go ahead and get offshore. Probably gonna hit the 30 mile mark and see what we can put in the box. Once again, it's a little more rough than was predicted, but that's okay, we're out here just as well. But what we're gonna start out with is this Shimano vertical jig. This is 135 gram, and we could possibly catch some, some different types of grouper or amberjack or those kind of thing. Red grouper is in season right now, so would be good to get a keeper one of those. But this is our first drop, so we'll go ahead and give this a drop and see if we can pull up something with this vertical jig. All right, so no luck on that vertical jig. So I'm showing a lot of good marks on this reef. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this double drop rig down. This is made up with 40 pound mono and this is a four ounce weight I would prefer a little bit bigger, but unfortunately I left my sinkers on the bay boat. But anyway, these are four alt circle hooks and we're just gonna drop this down just to kind of see what's down here. Um, if this is all smaller fish, you know, they're probably not gonna fight that big old jig, but we'll kind of see and maybe give that vertical jig a, a try a little bit later. You know, we could keep some vermilion snapper or lane snapper. Um, quite possibly could be on on this reef and those would be good to get in the box as well and that's what we might catch on this chicken rig here okay yeah all right we got them now yeah this is not our big monster but you know vermilion don't pull that heavy as well oh i think he got up no he's, he's man i can't tell. yeah he's still there he's still there so vermilion you know this could be a vermilion yeah exactly what i was hoping for and wishing for a little nice vermilion so these only have to be 10 inches and we could keep 10 of them and these are really good eating often called bee liners as well but let's get this guy in the box it's actually a good sized one let's get a measurement on him but he's definitely going in the box so he's about 14. All right, good start of the morning. All right, here we go. All right, second drop, second fish. Oh man, this has got a little bit better weight to it. All right. Yeah, he's got that jerk trying to get down to the reef. But these vermilions, they have kind of softer mouths. And I've noticed if I try to hoss them up too fast, especially if there's a dolphin, or that kind of thing coming out. Oh, is this a trigger fish? Yeah, it's a trigger fish. Nice little trigger. He wouldn't be a keeper even if he was in season. Oh, oh, here he comes. All right. Yeah, this guy came up and snatched it this time. Yeah, it feels kind of like that last trigger. A little bit more weight to it. It seems like he's given up and then all of a sudden he'll get a second wind and try to do what he can to get back down again. Red snapper? Yep. Red snapper. This is, this is not a bad one. He might just make the 16 inch if he was in season, but he's not. But he wasn't quite pulling as much as you would think for this size. Now he's not a monster or anything, but you know, I, I thought it was kind of a smaller trigger at first. Yeah, he would have made it. He's 17 inches. But let's go ahead and get him back. Whoa, there you go. All right, those smaller fish down there, hopefully vermilion, were really getting that bigger piece of mullet 
pulling it off off of that bigger hook so i've switched over to a smaller hook this is a i think it may be about a one aught or two aught circle hook but the main thing it's a lighter wire and i'm going to go ahead and switch to a piece of frozen shrimp and see if that just doesn't attract those vermilions a little more okay all right is he on sip yeah he's still here all right well this is that first drop with those smaller hooks and that shrimp and it was almost immediate when it got down there so hopefully for whatever reason that little bit of adjustment is going to help us get to get some vermilion wouldn't be able to tell you why if it did but sometimes just changing things up oh we got double oh man well we got a double i think they like that shrimp a little better what do y'all think well there's a vermilion on top and a trigger fish on the bottom the trigger fish has got to go back but not that vermilion another nice vermilion all right this is a nice vermilion you can see how they they have a little smaller mouth than you know like a red snapper as you can see it's a lot smaller mouth kind of points up like a bass you know kind of indicating that they like to stay on the bottom but let's get this guy in the box all right got shrimp baited up again i've been trying different types of things squid cut up mullet cut up cigar minnows and now shrimp and i've just been saving my shrimp from my inshore trips and just freezing them and that seems to be recently really a good bit more effective than the squid or or anything else you might not think it would make a difference and i don't know that i did but we'll see if it continues but that shrimp yep all right off the bat see i don't know man it's got a little more weight to it maybe it's two again but man that shrimp just hits the bottom and they grab it a lot more effective than that mullet was and it's even you know staying on the hook sometimes you put that shrimp on and you don't feel like it's going to even make it down to the bottom but i guess these fish just attack it so quickly you know they're just kind of gulping it that it doesn't really get nipped at and pulled off i don't know but all i know is it's catching fish right now oh did it get off oh man i think i had two on there something all of a sudden got a lot lighter i think i had something else on but this is our trigger fish that's got to go back all right here we go Come on, Vermilion. Jerking around a good bit. So hard to tell what you have sometimes. Could be a little trigger. Sometimes those triggers do that spin thing where they flatten their body on the way up. You can kind of feel that spin, but, oh man, a red snapper. All right, so you can see this guy, that's his stomach coming out. And that's a telltale sign of barotrauma right there. So one of the ways to do that, right below or right behind that pectoral fin, you can kind of get a spot in between the gills. And you can hear that air come out. So this, this needle has a hole in it right there. And it'll puncture and you can see that stomach actually kind of start to come in. That'll allow him to get to the bottom. See as he starts to go back down, that stomach will pop in. And then he can make it all the way down safely. Okay, I, I didn't go all the way to the bottom this time because vermilion sometimes do kind of hang up a little bit. And those marks on that depth finder are, are you know, a, a good ways up off the bottom. And I don't know what they are, and just maybe it's those vermilion. Of course, trigger fish do the same thing, but it was a vermilion. 
So maybe I'm on to something. We'll see. Let's get number three bee liner in the box. Now, I was showing you that mouse, talking about them being on the bottom, but they do hang up at the off the reef, you know, a little ways up sometimes. So let me show you what I was talking about. See all those marks up here. You know, they're a good ways up. So that very well could be that vermilion hanging up, you know, in about the 80 foot depth. So about 20 feet off the bottom, 40 feet off the bottom or so. The shrimp goes on so easily. I'm just surprised a lot of times how it's not coming off. But really effective right now. So really, if you do inshore fishing like I do, and you go out and buy some live shrimp, have a dozen or so left over or whatever, go ahead and throw it in the freezer and, you know, save it for times like this. All right, so here we go. All right. Oh man, it got off. Oh, oh, there he is. All right, I had him on for a second and then he came off. I thought for sure I didn't have any shrimp left, but then something came up and just grabbed it. Feels kind of like that red snapper. A lot of times those red snapper will, you know, hit it a lot harder than those vermilion do. But maybe it's just a nice vermilion. Oh, he's coming up. Well, that's what happens too. Up in that water column, you'll get bigger snapper too. That's exactly what happened. All right, that would be a keeper. He's about 18 inches probably. If it was red snapper season, we'd have our limit, although on the smaller side, but all on those little small circle hooks. All right, I wanna show you this. This is a ghost shrimp. We got this in our live shrimp when we were doing our inshore fishing last trip or two. Let's get this guy on there. See if he catches a vermilion. The ghost shrimp hooked a lot better. They've got this backbone or this back shell, I, I should say. The shell along their back is pretty tough. And I was able to kind of go in and out a couple times. So definitely that's going to hold a little better than just regular shrimp. Let's see if the vermilion like to eat it. man here we go all right got him got him got him got him i actually didn't go all the way to the bottom i just stopped when i started getting hits and i didn't want you know the fish to kind of get my shrimp off all the you know down going down to the bottom it's got some weight to him so it could be a red snapper no good vermilion all right Let's see, I forgot which hook I put that ghost shrimp on. I think it was on the top, which is gone, but I think the vermilion got just the standard shrimp. Check them out, another nice vermilion. He's a decent size too. All of these are really. This is a total length measurement, so you know you can see he's a little over 15. So this shrimp, like I said earlier, is super effective. And look at these little pieces I'm putting on here. I'm just putting even just a little half of a shrimp or even this whole shrimp without the head that's just, you know, a smaller type shrimp. But those are catching those bigger snapper and everything really. The other good thing about it is the shrimp don't dirty your boat or stain it like those squid do. That squid ink will really kind of stain your boat and it's really hard to get off. You kind of almost need to constantly wash it off as you cut it up. Shrimp just dirties it up, but it doesn't stain it. This could be a vermilion. The vermilion, obviously, they don't pull quite as hard as those red snapper. No, but it, oh, it is a vermilion. That's what I was hoping. It's a nice vermilion. This is the biggest vermilion of the day. That's for sure. Check him out. Let's get a measurement on this one. Yeah, he's just a touch under 17. 
So that is a nice vermilion snapper, also called bee liner. Let's get him in the box. We got number five already. Oh, oh man. All right, that was just a snatch. I'd gone all the way to the bottom that time. So, oh man, he got off. Like I said, those vermilion do have a little bit softer mouth than some of the other snapper out there, and or especially those red snapper. And if you work them too hard, oh, here we go. You can pull that, tear their mouth. Here we go. Especially if you have a dolphin or a shark you're worried about and you're really hossing them up really fast, a lot of times you'll just rip that mouth trying to get it up away from that shark or dolphin or whatever. Fortunately, that doesn't seem to be a problem today. This is another vermilion. All right, number six, everybody. Four more to our limit. All right. All right, this gear I'm using with this chicken rig to catch these vermilion snapper, this is an older style pin reel. This is a GTI 320. And you know, it doesn't have a massive amount of drag or anything. But it's really good for, you know, just dropping straight down. It will handle kind of your bigger snapper, you know, if, if they should grab it. And this is a, a Shimano Talus PX heavy rod. All right, I've tried up in the water column, down on the bottom, mid-range, that kind of thing. Kind of seems overall these vermilion are a little bit closer to the bottom, if not right at the bottom. So I've kind of been targeting that area recently and that's what i've been grabbing i've also just been stopping whenever i'm starting to feel nibbles and kind of seeing what that brings up which is kind of what i just did now but i think i was very near the bottom with it anyway all right let's see now like i said this is a heavy did it get off yeah like I said, this is a heavy rod and it may be contributing to these tear-offs. It's probably a little too big to be using for these vermilion. It just doesn't have enough give whenever they start to take a run. And I think that could be contributing to tear in their mouth. But I could switch, but if it keeps happening, we will do that. But I think we're okay for now. One of the things I like about this chicken rig or this double drop rig is the way you make it up, as you can see right here, the hook kind of stays away from the line a little bit, just in the way that it's tied. And that's gonna be kind of important as this line is dropping down to the bottom. It doesn't seem to get tangled very much. Sometimes with the Carolina rig, um, even a knocker rig, Sometimes that'll really get tangled up and twisted on the way down. And I really don't find that happening with these double drop rigs, if, if ever. And you can see they're just really effective, really simple fishing out here. But it's really effective, mostly important, really fun. Especially when you're getting a whole bunch of nice fish in the ice box. Oh, here we go. Man, it was like nothing going on. Usually you get down and you get a couple a couple taps within, you know, a couple seconds. And I wasn't getting anything. And I thought maybe the shrimp had gotten eaten off on the way down or worse, the bite just suddenly died. But here's our bee liner. That was good. And he was about I, I'm trying to get kind of in between that line of fish that I showed you. Not on the bottom, but not on the top. And that's where this one came from. A little bit smaller than some of the others, but this makes number seven. I think we'll keep at, at this and see if we can't get our 10 person limit. All right, it's 1136. So I'm gonna do this chicken rig only until noon. 
whether we get our three more to make our B liner limit or not. And then we'll get back to targeting some bigger fish, possibly that red grouper. Oh man, here he is. This just hit the bottom and I had him. All right. Come on, come on, come on. Oh man, he got off. Oh no, he's still here. He's still here. Either got off and came back or I was mistaken. It's almost like the fish that got on after the other one got off, if that in fact is what happened, maybe bigger than that first one. All right, come on, vermilion. Red snapper again. All right. All right, so I didn't stop all the way on the bottom with this one. Definitely doesn't have as much pull as the those red snapper we be get, we've been getting. Maybe we did get our vermilion here. Yep, vermilion. All right, number eight. Okay. All right. All right, I think we have a good chance of this being a bee liner. It kind of did the same thing that happened when I've gotten them before. I didn't go all the way to the bottom and then there was a delay in getting a strike and let's see if that's what it is yep that's what it is number nine b liner i don't know what that is but by not letting it get all the way to the bottom and for whatever reason like i said if there's a pause before i get a strike it seems like it's a b liner all right, check him out. All right, what's our time? Oh man, we got nine minutes to get our last one. All right, so far so good. No taps since I've stopped it. Here we go, all right, all right. Is this number nine? Oh man. Don't get off. This could be him, y'all. This could be him. He doesn't have as much weight like a snapper or trigger fish. There was no tap for a few seconds. Coming up. Yes, we got him. Get him in the boat. All right. We limited out on our vermilion with how many minutes to spare? Oh, with six minutes to spare. We got our limit of vermilion and it seems like right there at the end I figured out the technique to getting them but nonetheless we'll remember that for next time and get this guy in the box. The final keeper is always the most beautiful. Check him out. All right well let's get him in there and do a fish count just to be sure we do have 10. Check it out, look at that box of fish. Man, 10 nice vermilion snapper. One really nice one right here. All right. All right, so I switched over to this Johnny Jig 80 gram and this glow color. And this lighter one's just gonna flutter down a little slower than, a, than that other one would. I usually try to match my gram number to the depth. So we're at about 120, 115, and I was using 135 gram earlier, and it just felt too heavy. Now, I kind of went on the other side. Now I'm a little light with the 80. I don't have any 120 grams, but nonetheless, this will flutter a good bit slower than that, than that heavier one and maybe that's the difference oh here he is yep that made the difference everybody all right got him on the jig yep so switch to that lighter one and i was only jigging it for 45 seconds or so before this fish came up and bit it 
and he's not a super big monster but nonetheless we were effective with this jig here let's see what he is oh snapper red snapper man it's the same red snapper we were catching on that little three alt circle hook rig <laughs> all right it doesn't seem like there's any big fish on this reef so let's go ahead and hit a new reef and see if we can get something on this jig all right well i was setting my anchor out at this new reef and i was letting out quite a bit of line and i didn't realize that my anchor rope was not tied to anything in the anchor locker and watched the end of my anchor line just go off into the gulf <laughs> but i didn't even ever think to check that since i purchased this boat so we're going to be kind of drifting over this reef we'll just try this a few times and if we don't get anything we'll kind of head on back so i guess we'll experiment with drift fishing with jigs for a few minutes and just kind of make the best that we can out of this situation oh oh man i got him all right i got him drifting on the jig all right everybody man he feels like dead weight maybe i hooked it. no he's moving all right what have i got maybe i got my anchor rope just feels like dead weight but i guess it could be a fish something on here uh, no it's got a fish a fish man i'd almost wish it was my anchor rope but what have i got a big old trigger fish man oh look and here comes a dolphin Jeez. went from hoping it was a big nice grouper to hoping it was my anchor rope to getting a trigger fish he would have been a keeper if it was in season but he's not all right all right trigger there you go all right i think it's time to wave the white flag for today after losing that anchor i'm just moving a little too fast to drift and i'm only really getting one shot on those reefs and it's getting later in the day so kind of have to know when to quit but anyway we got a lot of nice vermilion today loaded up the box with our lemon of those guys those will be real tasty on the dinner table but if you enjoyed this video give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing i put out weekly videos fishing either inshore or offshore showing you what i do to find the catch fish so until next time hope to see you on another episode of forgotten coast fishing